Hello, welcome to Alyssa Jean's Reviews, and this is my live stream review for Star Trek Picard Season 2, Episode 1, The Stargazer. So the season premiere of Picard is here, and I'm here to review it, but there will be spoilers if you have not seen up through the end of this episode, yada yada. You should not be watching this video. Also, I just want to mention uh, for those of you who happen to watch this live uh, and you want to participate in the chat, just let it be known that I am not going to interact with the chat as I am going through my review because I just want to get my review out as if this was a pre-recorded video. Uh, and then if there are people in the chat um, and there's time, I will talk to you uh, at the end of it. Um, so you can probably expect that my Picard reviews are going to be uh, live streams until Discovery is over because I just don't have the time to do two record pre-recorded videos, one after the other on Thursday and Friday. I just don't have the time. So Picard reviews will probably be live streams. Um, but I guess it doesn't really make a difference for people who are watching this later on in the archives. Um, so as for my review, let me just kind of backtrack a little bit on some things that I have said previously uh, about this upcoming season, usually on other live streams that I've done that are just about general topics or whatever I feel like talking about. I've mentioned Picard before, and my feeling based on the trailer was, it looked like to me they're pulling a first contact, or my view of first contact, which is that it was created in a boardroom with corporate people who don't know how to write, who said, hey, let's put time travel and the Borg together in a movie. It'll sell movie tickets. Who cares if it's written well and all? Who cares if it contradicts everything we've already established about the Borg? Who cares? Uh, so I was getting real first contact vibes <laughs> that it was like, ooh, let's just throw Q in here and let's just throw the Borg Queen and time travel again and everybody loves it. So I was skeptical. Um, so I will say that um, after the first episode, I remain skeptical. But I'm, that's got my attention. Uh, I'm open-minded. Uh, I am uh, open to seeing uh, where they go with this. They set up a couple of intriguing storylines, um, particularly with the Borg, um, that I'm kind of interested in. I, I wanna, okay, I'm listening. We'll see where you're going with this. I remain skeptical. <laughs> But uh, sure, I'll go along with it. I'll see where it goes. And maybe I'll end up liking it a lot more than I think I will. Uh, so who knows? Now, as for the first episode, I would say it's a pretty uh, solid premiere. Uh, there is a time jump. So it's spending a lot of time, you know, just kind of catching us up on what the characters are doing now and uh, kind of putting the chess pieces in place to uh, get into the real action, which should start um, in uh, season in uh, episode two, rather. Um, so let's see, Brandon, hello. I will say a quick hello to Brandon in the chat. You hope that you haven't turned me into a skeptic. Um, no, no, no. I've always been skeptical about season two of Picard uh, since I saw the first trailer. Um, yeah, so anyways, I'm not going to interact with the chat anymore because I want to get my review out <laughs> and then I'll interact with the chat. But um, yeah, I it was good. It was a good it was a good premiere. I, I liked it. Um, it did a great job of, of catching us up on the characters and setting the stage. Um, it does some things different than season one did uh, that for one thing that our characters are now more connected to Starfleet. I kind of did enjoy having a show that wasn't about Starfleet. It was kind of nice, honestly, but I'm okay with them, you know, kind of connecting back to Starfleet again, and getting to see the Stargazer and all these different cool ships. Um, anyway, so let me go through, kind of go through the episode. Um, they have this cold opening in the beginning, which I'm going to be honest, I really don't care for this particular plot device. I see it used a lot in action movies and actually i think the pitch meeting has made fun of this uh, plot device a few times it's this it's usually in action movies like these 
the cold opening is just the scene in mid-action, but we don't know what the context is yet. Oh, we just see this exciting thing, and then we're going to get back to it later. Eh, just start from the beginning. Just start from the beginning. Like, I, I, I didn't need that, especially since, honestly, that I saw that in a, there was a, the clip that was shown on, um, what you call it, the Res Wesley Crusher show, The Ready Room, last week. Uh, that was, I think it was basically that. It was the cold open, so I'd already seen it. But even if I hadn't, it's just like, I don't need that. Well, let's just start the story. Start the story. Um, then we have a new revamped credit sequence, uh, which I think makes sense for season two. Uh, it's got a lot more Borg... Uh, the, uh, it's looking more Borg themed <laughs> in uh, in the opening credits, and they definitely modified the theme song too. There's more orchestra in it, and uh, it seems a little bit more, you know, a little less melancholy. I kind of missed the first season version, if I'm being honest, but maybe this will grow on me after a while. Um, couple notes in the opening credits. I noticed Jerry Ryan is in it. Uh, I thought they were weren't going to put her in it uh, last season. They weren't considering her a main cast member, but I guess she is now. And I'm glad she is. Uh, and then I guess uh, I didn't recognize her name, but I heard elsewhere that the actress who plays Laris is also in the opening credits and was not last year. And we have seen that there's going to be some alternate version of her or whatever in the trailers. Um, but I'll talk about Laris a little bit in a minute. So uh, then we open up in the, uh, the the winery, Chateau Picard. Is there actually a Chateau Picard? There should be. Like, somebody ought to, like, make that. I would buy that wine. <laughs> if there not, isn't, there probably already is. Somebody probably thought of that. Um, so we open up there, and they're playing a 20th century song, as uh, they often do in Star Trek, and listening to it on an old record player, <laughs> because technology, eh. <laughs> and, and uh, they're playing, time is on my side, yes it is, and uh, they're really heavy handed with the time thing, <laughs> because then in the, the scene with Laris and Picard after that, they're talking about time a lot. And then there's that speech Picard gives where it's just like, they say that space is the final frontier, but it is time, time. And then really, then he goes, oh, and the uh, first Romulan cadet. Yay. <laughs> uh, the time thing had nothing to do with anything. We're just going to say time a whole bunch of times in this episode. I really feel like that um, Lower Decks needs to do a time travel episode, which I, they haven't done yet. And But at the beginning part of the time travel episode, before they travel back in time, they should have the characters go, oh, I don't have the time. <laughs> do you know what time it is? Where did the time go? Because <laughs> it's just a little heavy-handed. Like, time, get it? Time travel? Uh, if I didn't already know... That we were gonna have time travel based on the trailers, I would be, I would know like, oh, they're saying time a million times. So I guess we're having time travel. A little, little bit heavy-handed. Um, then uh, we get a flashback of Picard with uh, his mother, which is interesting because I don't recall him really mentioning his mother before. Probably in the episode Family, I'm sure his parents got mentioned. Uh, but I don't remember much about his mother. And certainly we have not seen her before. Um, and she gives him the line that he uses in his speech. He goes, look up, Picard. You know, he looks up at the stairs. I am intrigued in this and what, what this has to do uh, with with things. So um, they seem to be setting up for for some something related to his past and his mother. There's like little flashes of her getting attacked or dra dragged off. Uh, so I'm, I'm interested in this. I do have to ask, though, why is young Picard dressed up like a 1930s newspaper boy? I mean, <laughs> and we've seen this before. Like, I, th I think in, in the episode Family, they were dressed in old school and, and uh, generations when Picard has that vision with, when he has a 
you know, a family and kids and stuff. They're all dressed like they live in the 1800s. Why? Why? Why would Picard be dressed up like in the 1930s when he was a kid? But, but anyway, this is not the first time Star Trek has done that, especially with Picard. But it, I just find it weird. <laughs> um, so uh, then we get to start catching up with all the characters. This was a lot of fun for me. Um, so there, there has been a time jump, and I'm glad they did a time jump because at the end of the first season, they made it sound like, oh, we're going off on the loss of Renita together, and we're going to go off on adventures and do stuff. And I'm like, what? What are they going to do? <laughs> and clearly, the writers didn't know either. They were just like, oh, let's just set them up to go do something. <laughs> and then they thought, what the fuck are they going to do? Let's just do a time jump instead. And I'm okay with that because I didn't know what about number one he's gonna just abandon number one like he does again in this season poor number one like uh, i don't think picard really likes his dog i think he just has the dog for show because he keeps abandoning him but anyways i do like the time jump um i do like that elmore is, is in starfleet academy rafi has been reinstated uh we get actually a little bit of uh uh, uh, some lines from Raffi about Seven of Nine we, that was hinted at at the end of uh, last season. Looks like uh, they had a little thing. Raffi's kind of frustrated with it. Uh, Seven of Nine is just too independent, and, um, which is ironic considering she came from the Borg. But yeah, it's interesting. Um, so that was interesting. And then we see that Seven of Nine has taken over to the La Serenita uh, and she um, has the one hologram. Now, in a behind-the-scenes thing that they did on the uh, ready room, uh, Jerry Ryan says that Seven of Nine deleted all of the other holograms except that one because that's the only one she could stand. I didn't get that from the show, though. Like, uh, is that going to be mentioned in the show at some point? Because it just otherwise it's just the actors telling me in a little uh, behind-the-scenes thing, which I don't like. I want to see that in the show if that's the case. But anyway... That was cool. She's fighting off these dudes who are trying to steal her shit. Uh, she's back working for the Rangers again. Um, she happens to, by happenstance, coincidentally, happens to uh, run into the same anomaly that the Stargazer runs into. But I'll get to the Stargazer in a second. We also get Soji and and uh, uh, Dr. Gerardi on this planet that is the Deltons. It's those dudes from uh, the motion picture, the Deltons. I actually did not. It did not click for me for some reason, even though they were all like bald. <laughs> and that one guy was kind of sexual. Uh, I sh it should have clicked, but for some reason it didn't click, especially since I just watched the motion picture recently, like two months ago. Um, but some, for some reason it just didn't click in my brain. And then I saw... Uh, another YouTube video where they pointed that out. I was like, oh, yeah, it's the Deltons. It's uh, like that that chick from uh, Motion Picture. Vija. It's like, you know, like her. <laughs> so that was cool. Gerardi's drunk. I love how she was, like, how she turned away that guy by like saying, yeah, and then I, you know, Mur might have murdered my last boyfriend, but I got off because I was because I was under some rival mind control or whatever. <laughs> uh, that was it was funny. That was pretty fun. Um, and Soji is there, and I'm not exactly sure why they're together or what they're doing. They're going around the different planets and hanging out with them and promoting our you know artificial life. I, I'm not really sure, but. Uh, I get the impression Soji's not a huge part of season two. We've barely seen her in the trailers. And one of the scenes we saw in the trailers was in this episode. It was just like her toasting with all of those Deltons. So I don't know if I'll see her much. And then uh, Stargazer comes by, beams her up. Uh, here you go, crew. Here's this drug lady <laughs> to, to, <laughs> to help, help us with the, with this anomaly. Um and by the way, the stargazer. I mean, that is definitely like, ooh, look, this is Picard's original ship, but it's fucking cool. And I love the look of it. Uh, it's a, a new kind of ship that they said that they built from um, the Borg parts from that, that thing from last season that they used some of that to, to 
and to make a new class of starship. That is interesting. And that they decided to name the first one the Stargazer. Uh, very cool, very cool looking ship. So, um, yeah, I kind of nerded out about it. I, I did nerd out about it a little bit, even if I do think it was kind of like a little, ooh, look at this. I don't care. I loved it. Um, so we're getting all that set up. For, we're visiting all these different characters. Meanwhile, um, I forgot to mention the Picard and Laris thing. Um because Picard is, seems to be setting up for a couple different story threads or something about his mom. And then there's this thing about how he's always been alone and he never has been in a relationship and exploring that. So I actually kind of am interested in, in that. Did not care for the fact, though, that Laris was chosen as his uh, loved one, I think, or his romantic interest, because they couldn't think of anyone else so they're like hey you know that shaban dude let's just kill him off and make her interested in him instead like i don't care for that if i'm being honest not my favorite thing it just seems so contrived and it feels a little dirty like shaban was her husband in the last season and so and like now all of a sudden he's just conveniently kill off so that they can set her up as a romantic interest for interest for picard all of a sudden not my favorite thing i am not gonna lie um Anyway, so there's this kind of mystery about Picard's love life and why why has he always been alone? I actually am kind of interested in that. I'm curious to see where they're going with that as a as a story thread for Picard. Um, then he goes and visits Guinan. Uh, I had gotten the misimpression from the trailer that um, he was going to go find her in the alternate timeline. Maybe he still will, actually, um, because she has this extra perception of time. Uh, and that still might be coming. Maybe he'll go find her in the alternate timeline as well. Um, but here, um, he's just basically going to see her so they can have Guinan in the show. <laughs> uh, he wants to go to her for advice. Um, does he do that all the time? Or just, like, you know, every once in a while? Uh, so, but uh, I, I, I liked it. The one thing I didn't like is how Guinan was like, uh, like had to explain how she's older. Oh, yeah, you know how my race, we don't age. Well, only if we choose to age, and I, I'm choosing to age now. You don't need to say anything. To be perfectly honest with you, I, Whoopi Goldberg doesn't look significantly older to me. She looks like she put on some weight, <laughs> but she doesn't look like she's like old, old. I think you could have just not said anything at all, and it would have been fine. I would have much preferred, actually, if they had not said anything than to have her throw in that line. It's like when they explain you know, try to explain on screen about why the Klingons and Discovery changed from <laughs> season one to season two. Oh, they shaved their heads for the for battle. No, just stop it. Just stop. Just 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 stop it. <laughs> like you don't have to do that. Uh, that's kind of how I felt about that. Um, okay, so then you know, one by one, we get we start getting the whole game together to investigate the uh, the weird. Anomaly, uh, Rafi and Elnor aren't on the um, the Stargazer, but they're on the uh, Excelsior. So that's Rafi's ship. That she said that uh, Elnor is on that ship as well. So they're on the Excelsior. So they're there in the vicinity, and uh, of course, Rafi is the one who checks in. Commander Raffi here reporting for the Excelsior because my captain couldn't be bothered to do it because my captain is not a main character, but whatever. Whatever, you just got to accept those types of things. I just like to poke fun at it. <laughs> um, so now we kind of get into uh, the same uh, time period is the cold open, except now it's from a different perspective. The cold open was from this other dude's perspectives. There was a Vulcan guy, um, and was following them on the turbo lift and all that stuff. And then, um, we, now we get the perspective from the bridge and we get more of the context. Um, and, I got to say, I'm very fascinated in this concept of the Borg claiming to want to join the Federation and saying, help us, Picard. Um, but then coming on, and uh, I actually, you know I always hate the Borg Queen, but I actually thought she looked a little cool. 
and I got a minute on this one. <laughs> like that weird mask. I wonder what that's all about. And she kind of looked like Dr. Octopus with the tentacles. I guess she's had the tentacles before, but um, it reminded me of Dr. Octopus. But um, it's interesting that they said she was stunning everyone. She wasn't killing them. She was just stunning them. So it almost seems like maybe the Borg actually did have good intentions. Um, and there's a reason the reason why they're, they're controlling all the fleet is not to assimilate them, but it's something else. And um, I'm sure whatever their methods, or whatever their, I'm sure that their methods uh, aren't what uh, <laughs> Picard and, and Rios and crew would want, but they may still actually have good intentions. And that's, that's just, that's the best they can do. Like that's, a, that's the board be nice <laughs> stunning you. And then taking over all of your ships. Like that's them being nice. <laughs> trying to, to, um, I'm interested. This is where the show has me hooked. I want to see where they're going with this. I do. Uh, I, I am interested in, and in where we're heading with that. Um, so, I don't know. We'll see. Now, then, um, when Picard uh, does the uh, the self destruct, which uh, usually they set it for like ten minutes, two minutes or so. But uh, I, I guess he set it for ten seconds, and that's fine. We needed to get to that <laughs> quickly. And uh, she says the line from his mom, Picard look up. Now, I'm going to go ahead and speculate here that um, because Picard was part of the Borg Collective, she still has his memories in the Collective, and that's how she knew to say that. Um, but I am intrigued by it. But then, ship blows up, and Picard wakes up at home, but in an alternate version of his home, uh, and then Q shows up, and here, I do like that they have the younger version of Q. Um, the de-aged Q definitely did not look that good. It didn't look uh, as good as the new de-aged Luke Skywalker from Book of Boba Fett, which looked better than the de-aged Luke, Luke Skywalker from The Mandalorian. Uh, but I think it looks worse than both of those, actually. But it was only on screen for, like, two seconds like if that it was barely on screen <laughs> so they, they were trying to rush it off the screen to hide it so, so you can see how terrible it looked um but i i like that they did that i don't know i know like gun guy, guy pointing out her age bothers me because i don't think it was necessary but i you know q can make himself look like anything i don't mind a little quick explanation as to why Q would make himself look older. I don't mind that. I kind of actually liked it. I actually kind of thought it was cool. So um, we'll see what Q is up to. Uh, yeah, I mean, they've got me intrigued. As I said, I'm still kind of skeptical uh, that this just isn't the cash grab and they're, and they're not going to take care to tell a good story and it's just going to be repetitive especially the time travel stuff really reminds me a lot of those voyager episodes which in and of itself were a ripoff of voyage home <laughs> so the, i don't know i don't know um but i also have heard that they went back to 2024 which is the same year this is going back to and i and uh there was an easter egg somewhere where there was a sign that says sanctuary district uh, in one of the screenshots. So obviously they're not going to just full on go to a sanctuary district because that would be really repetitive. But uh, I think they exist in this world of 2024, which which is cool. That makes sense. They should because you got to be consistent. Um, and you know what? Uh, God, I saw an article recently. God, I don't remember where it was. I think it was in the state of Washington where they were setting up these like homeless kind of camps and i'm like those kind of look like sanctuary districts to me it's not exactly the same thing but <laughs> we're not that far off from it if, if we're being honest um so anyway uh that uh that's interesting well we'll see i don't know we'll see uh they have my attention we'll s hopefully it'll be better than i initially thought it would be from the trailers we'll see how it goes um, 
All right, let me go ahead, give my rating out of 10, and then I can check in with Mark and Brandon in the chat to see what they were up to, uh, and then I'll get out of here. So my rating out of 10 for the Stargazer is an 8. A pretty solid uh, opener. Uh, I think it did its job. I think it caught us up uh, after the time job as to what all the characters are doing. It set up some really intriguing mysteries that uh, I am really generally interested to see where they're heading with them. So it did its job. Um, it's a neat, because I still have some nits to pick. <laughs> like, so it's not a nine or a 10 for me because of all the nits I have to pick for it. But I think it was an effective opener. I, I think it did a good job. Uh, we'll just see where they go from here. All right, let's see before I go. Uh, let me jump into people in the chat. Mark said, I love the first episode, but then again, I love the first episode of season one, too. I hear that. <laughs> the, yeah, season one, uh, episode one was probably the best episode of that season. Um, oh, yeah, I didn't know the dudes were Deltons either. Yeah, I didn't catch that. Um yeah, and Mark says, that's exactly what I thought. I didn't like the explanation of Guinan's aging either. I thought it was all just like play the Klingon makeup. Oh, yeah, we probably, that's what I ended up saying, too. <laughs> uh, I didn't read the chat until just now. Um, but, yeah, that's the same thing I said, that uh, it, it's kind of like explaining the Klingon makeup or why the Enterprise does snap holograms. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. Hey, thank you so much for joining me in the chat, Mark and Brandon, and thank you, you watching this in the archives, for watching this in the archives. And please like this video. Please subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And uh, I will see you all next week for Star Trek Discovery on Thursday and Star Trek Card on Friday. Goodbye, everyone.